I think frequently in life we can all fi find ourselves in a place where perhaps um, we're not quite sure of the direction we want to go. We're leaning towards something but can think of arguments against it, uh, haven't made a full commitment. Um, a friend of mine is a pastor of a, a rather large suburban church and, and recently he has encouraged his parishioners to become more involved in a ministry to the poor, a ministry to those who find themselves at a place in life where it's difficult to find food, it's difficult to find lodging. And a wonderful group of parishioners got together and uh, took on his challenge and they found very shortly afterwards that people were coming from their parish and from other parishes to a meal that they were preparing uh, in the parish hall. And that grew, and they began to distribute food and, and deliver meals uh, at home to the elderly. Eventually, though, um, they, they realized that uh, missing from their work was an element of prayer. And so they began to meet together and went to the daily mass at the parish in the morning together. And it was through prayer and through celebration of the Eucharist that they came to a moment of decision, that they realized that it was necessary for them to go forward in this ministry and that they, they had to organize themselves to do that. They had a common reason. They had a common goal. And this is what they believed the Lord wanted for them. But that moment of decision was very important for them. And in a certain way, St. Paul speaks of that same type of decision that has to be made. And the second reading, and I know the second reading can be a little jarring for us to hear, but St. Paul is saying essentially that a man and a woman, to form a union in Christ, it takes a moment of decision, a decision that will affect them for the rest of their lives, that they will sacrifice, that they will give of themselves for a common cause, a union in Christ that is a source of grace for them, for their children, and for the whole society. And in the gospel, we hear that followers of Jesus were asked to make a very momentous decision, that the words he gave them were very difficult to hear, and many decided that they weren't going to follow him any longer. But the twelve remained, and, and Peter speaks for the twelve. And we notice he, Jesus did not soften his words to them. He expected quite a bit of them. And he asked them if they would leave him um, too, uh, there would be consequences. And he knew that the kingdom of God depended on his disciples, on accepting not just what was easy to hear, but also accepting what was difficult, what was challenging. And the real question, the real question I think that is posed to us in today's liturgy is, can we accept Christ and all that comes with it? We can accept his beautiful and comforting words, uh, say, from the Beatitudes and how to pray as we hear in the Lord's Prayer. But can we accept the difficult words as well, the words that cause us to reflect on our need to uh, forgive, our need to reconcile, our need to give of ourselves. Peter, as I said, spoke for all the others, and he speaks for us as well in a certain way. Peter says, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. That was a moment of decision for Peter. That was a moment of decision for all of the disciples. And in that moment, something wonderful, something miraculous happened. In that profession of faith, they became not just followers, not just a group of men, they became church. They became the church. And we give thanks for that decision that they made. They made for us so many, many years ago.